What's going on everybody and welcome back. So in this video we're going to work on installing a new thermostat because the one that's currently here I think is from 1959. It's pretty old. It's not working very well. The <laughs> We made a sticky note over here. I don't know if you can see it but it's basically not accurate. So if we want to achieve a temperature of 69 or 68 in here we have to set it to 64 um, and then if we set it to 58 it goes to 66 it's interesting how it works um, yeah I think it needs a replacement I don't think the temperature or the thermistor whatever mercury thermometer thing in here is accurate anymore and I just you know it would be nice to upgrade so I think we're gonna go with the Nest thermostat well I, I know we're gonna go with it I bought one so we're gonna try to install the Nest I believe it's a two wire I haven't even had the cover off I'm sure it's a two wire setup, but this is a third gen nest, so it should work with this. So I'm gonna pull this off. It looks like we got a flat blade on the bottom down here. So I'm gonna take that flat blade out and hopefully it'll come off and then we'll figure out what, what we're gonna do. I think I know the two wires we are gonna, uh, or the two ports we're gonna tap into, but I'm gonna verify that and I'll let you guys know. So I got my flashlight on just to show you guys, but this thing is ancient looking. It is like, I'm not even sure what's going on in there. I'm sure some, somebody could tell me, but I see some connections in there that we're gonna have to undo the wires coming through, um, or at least this one right here. And then, I don't know where the other one is, but I think I'll pull the cover off first, see what we got. I was wrong. It's a three wire. I don't know much about that. So I'm gonna have to look into that. I'm about to go do some research. I'll be right back. So I did a little research and this three wire, I probably have a common wire, which is cool. It means the nest will get constant power. So um, the one on the bottom right, I think the blue one is a C common wire. And the red one there, that's R, that's gonna be uh, the power when the heat's on. And then the white wire is gonna be W1. So that's for the heat, or just W. So one stage heating, got the W1, got common wire, and got the power wire. So three wire system should hook up nicely to the nest and it will get constant power so the battery will be charged as long as that common wire is hooked up downstairs, which as long as it works, that's it. So I think I know what everything is. I'm gonna take a picture of how it is. Uh, it's a reference, you should always take a picture when you take it off just to make sure you have everything um, documented what wires went where because if you don't you're just gonna have to go based on colors or do some tests but I'm sure there's a way to do it um, but we'll just take a picture and then we'll know what's what and we'll try to hook up the nest we have to mount the bracket on the wall see if we got any studs up in here it seems like at some point in life every room in this house was pink I don't know why that is <laughs> this is the second Second room that I found pink paint underneath, so I guess pink was big. <laughs> Pretty funny, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and try to feed those wires through here and see if we can get the bracket set up. I'm gonna go wide because we got all kinds of I don't even know some old mount here for a different thermostat. Not sure what they were doing with that, but um, it's crudely repaired so we'll, we'll put the wide thing on there and hopefully cover most of that and it'll look halfway decent so I'm gonna try to do that now so I believe I've got it properly hooked up um, these wires are like so old they got like a thread wrapped around them for shielding like I don't even know it's not plastic it's funny so it's kind of peeling off I made one of the wires shorter but they're a little bit bunched up in there I don't want to mess it up, um, but I think we're good. I got all the wires not touching each other too, just in case some of that wire uh, or some of the string that's on there comes off. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we have our W1 for our uh, heat, C for our common wire, and our RH, which should be our, our power. So hopefully that's correct. I'm gonna plug the nest in right now and see if it works. All right guys, so I kind of screwed up. <laughs> that uh, that wire was not a C, it was a G. So it was probably for G a fan, um, either an attic fan or I'm not really sure, but I had that hooked up to C and the 
furnace was rapidly cycling down there every time I turned the heat on. And I was like, oh crap, I, I broke it. <laughs> um, and I, I, th I thought it was the nest, I was cursing this thing. But you know what, I think what it is, is I suck. So this thing totally works now, it's great. I'm excited. Um, can turn it up and down. And when I turn it up, the furnace kicks on. I just heard it. And then I can turn it off. So I'm gonna leave the heat off now, but yeah, it does work now. And so hopefully we're able to have this at a legitimate temperature here and stop using these little, uh, these little things. I wonder how close this is gonna be to what the temp is. I have to see. Let's see what this thing says and see what that thing says. I am curious, uh, and it's nice. We'll have this. I set it up for like manual mode basically for now. Um, we'll have it set up for routines and stuff like that later on, but I think for now we'll just use it manually. I just wanted to have a thermostat that seemed more accurate. I know it's kind of overdoing it, but eventually we will use all the features on it, hopefully. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the thermostat install, and I can go do something else. Um, I spent a lot of time looking at this thing going like, what the heck's going on? What's wrong with it? But that's not going to work out. When you try to turn that, it's going to fall off. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so we were successful. I followed it for a little while, but yeah, don't, uh, don't use that G wire if you don't have a fan going on and don't put it on the common wire. So that's definitely it. So we don't have a common wire hookup here. So hopefully this thing is able to charge itself and get enough power and continue to work because some don't need it and some do need it. I'm not sure what scenario we are in here. Hopefully we don't need the common wire. If we do, we can try to add it or just ditch the smart thermostat thing. But I like it, it's pretty cool. It looks good and hopefully it works good too. So far so good after I fixed it. So this thing's cranking right now. So I have it set for 64 and 35 minutes and it's currently 61 which is cold, <laughs> it's pretty cold in here. Um, it's like 43 outside right now, so hopefully this thing warms up. This furnace seems like it takes a long time to get uh, the water that's circulating up to temp. This other room over here is like the first room. I got a smoke detector that needs batteries. This room is the first room to get some heat, and I feel a little bit of heat from the baseboard, but we're still 61. We've come up one degree in here so far, so. Takes some time to get some heat, but once it's cranking, it's good. So the boiler's just gotta get that water hot. The water is not hot enough. But I think once we live here, it'll be more consistent, but when we're staying here and then leaving, um, everything is getting all out of whack because it takes forever to heat the house back up. But it's better than I think running it all the time, I would think. So in here, we are ready for primer. So I just gotta clean. I wanna clean all the floors and everything, um, just in case, you know, we were to roll into the floor with, the, with the something, you know, we don't get it all full of compound. So I'm gonna try to clean up, patch, patch some holes, and just do the best cleaning job I can in here, and get ready to put some paint on the walls, just some primer anyway. I got one little spot here to just sand, touch up, but otherwise all the walls are wiped down, and we're ready for some Kills 2 primer. So that's what we're gonna do. So like I said, clean up time, and then we'll paint. So we got the primer on, it's all dry now. Looks pretty good. Obviously you can see through to this, the areas that were uh, compound and the areas that were paint. And uh, it looks good though, like it, it does a good job sealing. Um, I have some of these little imperfections, these little pinholes that were in my compound. Um, I knew they were there. I just wanted to see how much the paint would fill them. And I feel like, with another coat of primer, which I think we're gonna do, just because, I don't know, we're crazy. But also, it just, the, the more coats you put on, the more it builds that uniform texture, and the ceiling just came out so nice. I mean, I just, I really love how the ceiling came out. So I'm thinking, let's do another coat of primer on the walls. I know it's crazy, but it'll take us no time flat. Another coat of primer on the walls, another hour, and then we'll be able to hit it with the top coat next. But. Yeah, so right now I'm just gonna go through and sand um, all the walls. I'm gonna find out what grid I wanna use. I think I just wanna quickly get some compound and just spackle all these little tiny holes here that I have. And that way I don't have to worry about 
them not filling, you know what I mean? So I'll just, just gonna come through with a knife and just lightly hit all these little guys and scrape it really clean. And then I'll come through and sand all the walls and then we should be good to go. Once I have all those little holes filled in, I'll just make my way around and then I'll sand all the walls and then we'll hit with a second coat of primer. All right guys, so fast forward like maybe a week. Uh, I've done a lot of work, uh, not in here really, but elsewhere in the house. Um, and outside, but the walls have a second coat of primer on them. I did do that one of the following nights. So we had two coats of primer on the walls, really built up a nice, a nice texture, uniform. Um, everything looks and feels pretty good. I think it's gonna paint nicely. Um, you just, you can't really see a lot of the imperfections that you could before. And I think with a nice matte paint, it should look really good. So I'm excited. We're just gonna pick the color. I'm gonna get started on the closet in the meantime. Um, there's some work to be done in there. We'll talk about that later, but otherwise I've been at work digging outside Digging a ditch So I'll show you guys a little bit of that and what we've been using So what I did here was um, Dig this whole ditch out big time. You can see we got a big old mound on the left side of dirt And we kind of re-sloped this whole ditch to sort of keep the water in this area here because uh, during heavy rainfall and even just at a regular normal day we do have water in here um, the water table is really high here and all the water comes off the hillside and back and I've been talking to some people about it and uh, it's very common to have water in your backyard so I'm trying to resolve that in my yard anyway and I should be able to help everybody else on the hillside too by alleviating that so just trying to uh, do what needs to be done and uh, you know, muck the ditch out, which we've been doing uh, thanks to a nice tractor with a backhoe attachment uh, that I've been allowed to borrow and use. So that's cool. And the guys that are helping me, I appreciate it because I couldn't do it without them. I couldn't have hand dug this. The cord's sitting outside because the tractor must sit inside. So we got uh, first coat on baseboard trim in here. I want to take a look at it, see what it looks like, and it looks pretty good. It's got, you know, that first coat look to it, but even though we had some, some bare wood, it covered up nicely, no bleed through, not a lot of knots or anything like that, so we shouldn't have any problems, but they say that two coats should be good. Um, we'll see on the other darker stuff, but overall, I, I'm pretty happy with the one coat. This is a Sherwin-Williams urethane. Um, trim enamel is what it's called so got a coat on this too not on that side but on this side I did and we got a little bit of a little bit of showing through but it's still a first coat so maybe three coats on stuff like this we'll just have to see how it goes and I decided I wanted to biscuit join all the pieces together so I'll show you guys what's next over here so here we are in the garage here's the Massey Ferguson, which has got a nice bucket in front um, and the nice backhoe attachment in the rear, which is what I've been using. And it has two feet that you put down to hold it stable. And you could just dig like crazy with this thing. And uh, it's really a champ. It's a workhorse. I've been digging out trees with it. Just, just doing a number on this ditch, which is what needs to be done. And it broke the other day, blew a hydraulic line. so. Um, now here I am fixing the tractor, but that's just the name of the game. That's how it goes um, These machines are awesome, but like anything else they break so got to fix it And we'll get back to work with that and I'll show you guys some of that hopefully on the weekend I get some time with this machine and do a little bit more um, ditch digging so also we got the snowblower parts are on order for this thing I'll show you guys that when the parts come in they were back ordered, but I think they're finally on the way so I got new bushings uh, and we're working on trim. I got a million projects going right now. <laughs> None of them are cars. Although I tried to change my power steering pump today and it was not even the problem on the Civic, so I almost cried. But anyway, okay, back to work. This is the trim work that goes to the main, the, the door in the main bedroom. I labeled all the trim here so I know what's what uh, up there. Main bedroom, main door. So that's the entrance door. So all these pieces are for that. So what I'm gonna do is use this here biscuit joiner. 
And if you guys don't know what a biscuit joiner is, it's pretty awesome. It allows you to join two pieces of wood by putting a slot in it, and then you put one of these biscuits in each side. So you get these guys, and it goes into each side of the board, and then it helps to add rigidity to a joint when your, your surfaces are small. Like just that flat surface versus that flat surface, it's not a lot of surface area for the glue to bite and give you a nice strong joint. So when you send it into both sides, it's a much stronger joint. There's other ways to do it, but these things were just nailed like on the wall and they weren't actually joined. But I think the better way to do it is to do a biscuit joint and then you can paint it off and then put it on. I like to paint trim off of the wall just because you get much cleaner lines and you don't have to worry about cutting in as much. So the cut down, cut in time is a lot less and you get cleaner work if you're like redoing a whole house like I'm doing. So that's why I like to take my trim off and sand it like this and fill all my holes and now we're just gonna go ahead and biscuit join it so I'll show you guys that once we get that going. So what I ended up doing was using this piece of uh, plywood or like it's like Luon that I found. I think it's probably an eighth or three sixteenths thick. I don't know. I could hold it up to the tape measure. I guess I probably should. But this is a a great amount to use here. Yeah, see we're looking at an eighth. This is an eighth inch thick material. And when you put this down, and when you put this on top, and then you put this guy in here, and the blade comes out, it ends up being in the center of the board. Because the first one I did was not in the center, and you end up with a big chunk taken out like I have right there. So I'm missing missing a chunk of this because I screwed up. The height was not right and there's a height adjustment and I just totally spaced. It's been a while since I did a biscuit joint. But yeah, so I got my slots done and with that eighth inch piece, it puts us right in the right range where we're not gouging out the front of the wood. And we can still get our size 10 biscuit in there. So I just make sure that we coat this with glue like crazy all inside the slot on the on the flat and everything and then I use this fancy uh, 90 degree clamp which make it really nice to clamp these things they don't I don't know if they get it super tight but there's no not a huge gap and a little bit of glue squirts out and it just holds it steady while it dries so the biscuit is what's doing all the holding here and uh, so I think we should be good and I'll probably do, on the ones that are open on the bottom, I'll probably do a brace. I'll cut a piece of something and I'll just like tack it or staple it or something to the bottom just to keep it rigid so it doesn't, uh, you know, crack on me. Because just these two biscuit joints is still kind of flimsy and if you're not careful it might crack. So until we get it in place, we'll put something on the bottom. So that's pretty much it guys for attaching the trim so I'm gonna do this side here and we'll get it all glued up and then we'll move on to fixing this tractor so this line right here you can see once the camera focuses that guy right there was the guy that blew so it's a new one on there now and it goes down to uh, that section down there so I tried to clean out the frame rails best I can uh, of all the hydraulic fluid I'm gonna have to top it off um, but I don't want to start in here because it's uh, diesel stinky diesel and I have the garage all heated and I don't want to have to open the door and uh, lose all my heat from this nice heater so I'm gonna just work on my trim tonight and when I get here tomorrow I'll uh, pull this thing outside and uh, see if it uh, see how it works and make sure everything's operating and, and bleed it before I get the heat started in here to do my trim so yeah that's it for tonight on this thing gotta top off the fluid and uh, the Dipstick is on the side there. I'm sure it's low, so I gotta get a funnel there and I'll top it off. And then we gotta take these lines and hook these lines back up to the backhoe. Um, and then we can let the system bleed itself. And we'll just keep topping it off and we'll go and uh, test her out. I'll show you guys how this thing works. So I got this other joint glued and this one here is drying. 
fully half an hour clamp time and then let it dry overnight. Hopefully it'll be strong enough for me to tweak it because it's way crooked. It's like an inch and a half off at the bottom. These joints are not true up there. They're <laughs> that's that's why they just nailed them up. So I'm realizing that now. So hopefully I don't break it. When I install it, I'm going to nail the top and the tops of the boards and then I'll try to stretch it as we go to the bottom to make it square to the jam so it doesn't look terrible. We'll see what kind of reveal we're going to have. I just wanted to work with the trim we had and not redo it. When in, in, in hindsight, it's always easier to just like replace everything, but I'm trying to save as much money as possible here and just reuse the existing trim. So hopefully it comes out okay. So I'm just going to glue it up here and we'll try it. If this room comes out totally bad, then I'll do the next room differently. So live and learn. Tractor's topped off, so we're good to go on this thing. Like I said, going to fire it up tomorrow, so I'll probably show you guys that. But uh, yeah. Wow, lots of yelling going on outside. All right guys, so I should have should have filmed sooner. Got company over, everybody's hanging out, but should have filmed sooner. I got the stone here. I had eight tons of stone delivered and it's almost gone. So I'll show you guys what we did. We kind of got this whole section regraded here with the tractor. I got all this stone in the ditch. The ditch is still flowing, CJ's up there digging away with the tractor but we only went so far with the stone and then we're just going back to digging but it looks really nice I think I'm just gonna try to keep it clean and we're gonna work on this we'll plant grass in the spring I know you're not supposed to in the spring but do what we can so I kind of tried to work on this because it was kind of ugly looking unsightly so I'll try to regrade this whole area and hopefully we can uh, grow some grass in this location and I know I kind of did a number on all this but it's okay Working on it. We got some extra dirt over here. Can be dug out. I figure I'll just show you guys. These are the ruts that we dug <laughs> with the tractor. It's so muddy, you know. That's why I wanted to use the plywood, but we're staying close enough to the ditch. See, I dug really deep over here, so we're staying a little bit more shallow over there. I just want to try to, uh, you know, this is the shape of the ditch, so we're just trying to hold the shape. But you can see the water running over here. Um, it is still running. So we're just taking it little by little and uh, starting at the top now. So I'll head over there, show you guys the tractor working. But you can see the, the runoff here is crazy. So the rocks are just meant to slow during heavy rain and it looks good too. It's a nice looking uh, setup, especially once we have this all graded nicely. But just digging it for now. CJ's pulling the tractor out. Look at that. So yeah, once we dig it, it holds water like crazy. So I'll just get in there later on and I'll, uh, you know, use the uh, rake and the shovel to just regrade this a little bit, get it uh, so it doesn't hold in pools like this. But there's so much water coming out of the adjacent land. Um, we're effectively lowering the watering water table, I think, um, and just making everything drain to this point, which is good for this surrounding land is so muddy. I should be better at draining, I hope. So we're just getting up to this point here. And uh, yeah, it's looking good. You can see, once we get rock in the whole thing, it'll be nice, but eight tons of rock didn't go very far. So we're gonna need at least another eight tons to get to here, I would say. And then uh, probably another eight to get up here. So it'll be a long process. We'll, we'll spread it out over a few years here. But uh, so far, so good. Just gotta keep plugging away, keep digging. So this tractor's uh, been a workhorse here. You can see the water running. Got this little area dug already. The water's running pretty, pretty nicely. This tree's got some big roots over here. We're gonna just work around it. eventually go all the way that way because the ditch goes all the way that way too and that should help as well but for now we're just focused on this main run and you can see all that water 
it is starting to run here. So once we give it a point to connect to and go to, should be able to drain all this land and it won't be so, so muddy. But it's cooling off. It's gonna freeze soon, so we're not gonna be able to do that much work here coming up. So this will be it for a little while. But yeah, we'll show you guys watch the machine for a minute. Pretty sweet. So the rock pile is gone and we have a nice freshly graded area here. It needs a little bit of help. We had a couple of casualties, one being a lot of my grass, but this is still flowing here, which is awesome. We got all this rock, all this really nice stone in here and it looks good. I could fill it a little bit more, but for now I'm trying to spread it out. And uh, we got a nice little section here of trickle, and you can hear it. So you can also hear that car racing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we got a good amount done. Um, we did have a casualty with this lamppost, but we'll talk about that later. Um, yeah, I'm happy with the way it came out. Like I said, my grass took a hit here for sure. Um, we got a big pile of extra dirt, but definitely a new muddy section here of yard to, to work in. But I gotta show you guys what we did. So that's the whole ditch here that way. And then we kind of ran out of rock. So I'm gonna redistribute this rock over here a little bit better and uh, we'll get more rock maybe next year. But up here we dug the whole trench out all the way up the whole yard, all the way to the end, which is a lot. So I'm excited. I just got to come in here and regrade this, pull the roots out and get the garbage out of here. And I'll make this a lot cleaner. And then we'll plant some grass seed in here next year. Um, but I think for now, yeah, we'll just let everything settle in and dry out. And hopefully this creek keeps running. I see water flowing everywhere. And uh, pretty nice to see that especially when we get the rocks in here. It looks presentable, you know, and hopefully I can keep it that way and uh, won't erode. And so, yeah, I did get the tractor stuck pretty good back here. Um, right here, I had that thing super buried. So I dug some nice ruts. <laughs> the battery in the camera is pretty low, so we'll see how far I get. But yeah, I was digging myself out with a bucket. So I ended up getting it out. Luckily, I didn't have to get pulled out. Um, but yeah, you can see here, we're, we got all this standing water in the trench here, which is flowing now. So we're just draining the whole hillside here, my side and the, the adjacent properties are all just draining now, now that I dug this all out. So pretty cool, pretty fun project, honestly. Get to use power equipment, big tractors and heavy equipment, and uh, you know, spend a bunch of money on some rocks, which is cool. I didn't think rocks were so expensive, but it didn't even take me hardly anywhere. I still have like all this area still. Gotta get this whole area with some rocks eventually, but it's gonna take me some time. But yeah, we went we went all the way. All the way up. Quite the uh excavation project here but did good so this is all draining now which is great it's not going to drain into the land anymore hopefully because that's what it was doing just soaking in and hopefully it stays in the ditch here and runs down down that path we can like i said regrade this get all these shrubs and leaves out of here roots aren't good for that we don't want roots in the drainage but anyway, yeah, that's enough about drainage, and uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying this process here. Looks pretty cool. Looks like a little brook we made. We made like a little stream, except there's not like serious water, which is good. 
we'll see when it rains. I'll have to come out here and show you guys when it rains, uh, if we get any water flow through here. It'll be exciting to come in a downpour and see all of our hard work paying off. So, yeah, just gonna, you know, keep moving with this stuff, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video, whatever that may be. It's probably gonna be a long one, but a lot of big important things are happening over here and uh, things that need to be done, so just gotta take them down one at a time. Thank you for watching and uh, see you guys in the next video.